Hello there, and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Uh, today, I just quickly want to discuss with you this uh, idea or concept that I was pondering on just now. So, I was just reading the book of John, or uh, the Gospel of John. Don't remember exact chapter marker, maybe I'll mark it here somewhere, here, I guess. Um, but... There, Jesus was challenged about about his healings on, on the Sabbath day. And Jesus started to speak about his ministry and his sort of authority, something along the lines of um, the Son can do nothing except what he saw as the Father do. And what the Father does, the same does the Son. And how he has been given authority to judge the earth and, and mankind uh, because Father has given him that authority. And and he said that I don't need witness and I don't need like validation from people basically. I have witness from Father and the works that Father gave me provide witness from what I say. And even John gave me witness but I don't need man's witness and I don't need that that anyone says anything about me because I am sufficient in the father. Like he has that son father relationship and is fully adequate in that relationship. And Jesus didn't seek any validation. In fact, he didn't get any validation from those people. He, they wanted to kill him actually because he said those things. Uh, but Jesus was content in the fact that Father gave him validation. And that's a little bit something I would like to touch on if the Spirit allows and inspires. Hopefully he gives me the words to speak about this. Um, but that connection between Jesus and, and his Father, as well as between us and Jesus, as well as us and the Father. And how that identity of a son operates and how that relates to leadership and how that relates to following man systems and godly systems. And often we see this problem that people are kind of insecure about operating in the calling and the giftings of God. So it's probably a calling and giftings, which is like the grace of God. But they're not fully stepping into that grace of God because they feel like somebody needs to come, some higher authority needs to come and say, you, my son, are a prophet, are an evangelist, and now I anoint you. You know, I mean, that might happen. And that, that ministry is also important, important part of encouragement, activation in your ministry. So not, I'm not intending to make light of that, but, um, but what I'm saying is that some people are insecure or afraid of operating in the calling and giftings unless they can find a framework or a church or a person who would kind of say, this is okay. And who would kind of take that responsibility for them. So, for example, uh, in case of this kind of thing, he would start following this person. And that might be God's will, or it might not be God's will. But let's say in this case, it's not the perfect will of God. And let's say something goes wrong, as it typically does when you start your calling. So something goes wrong here. So what happens? Oh no, why did I follow this, this person here? You know, he led me astray. And, you know, this church treated me wrong and whatever. Start play, blaming other people or placing responsibility to these things. Similar as to, we talked earlier uh, about systems of man and systems of, of God. Um, but you're not 
taking personal responsibility necessarily doesn't mean this always happens, but sometimes it might happen. So that's of course not good. But if you have the identity of a son and you're not seeking validation, but you're following God and you have a strong relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, uh, then if something goes wrong, then you, of course, then you go to the father. Did I not listen to you correctly? Or what did I do? Why did this happen? But it's between you and God and you're personally involved. You don't, you don't go to God like, why did you send this person to me? They didn't know what to do. And then they, it would guide me correctly. It's your responsibility to follow God and they're there to help you. And they're not perfect. The leaders and the ministry ministers are not perfect. They're men just like you. And they just want to help and do their ministry as well. So don't don't put additional blame on them as if they didn't have enough burden already. These guys have a lot of burden. Like spiritually they're being attacked and criticized by people and your blaming doesn't help at all. So deal with it between you and God. Of course, correct them if you have the opportunity. But um, but what we saw in Jesus in this uh, excerpt of Gospels is that he didn't require validation and he completely and fully operated in the calling that God and the Father gave him. So let's try to grow into same maturity when it comes to following God, that we understand our authority, we understand our position, we understand God's great love towards us, and then operate in it, and become these persons that can encourage others, that because you're so um, confident in Christ, and in your position in Christ and in your grace that he has given you and you know your calling, you know your giftings, you know your grace and you operate in it, then you can give that confidence to another person, person and you can encourage them and come like, hey, you might not feel confident right now, but follow me, I'll show you, I'll show you who you are, I'll teach you these things and you can lean on me if you need to first. But I'll show you, and you, you'll be doing the same works and greater works, kind of thing. So that's kind of a thing I want to challenge you with uh, when it comes to leadership and any other thing, but in leadership especially, that we need to find our way out of that timidness, that, oh, did God really call me? Where can I find, like, oh, seeking for man's approval and validation. No, let's try to focus or forge strong relationship with God and help. let him teach you what is your calling, what is your grace, and then operate in it confidently. But here we see that whoever fears and is timid is not yet perfect in love, and he doesn't yet fully understand the love of Father. And... That includes many of us. Uh, yeah. But I hope you found this interesting and inspirational. Let's talk about more things in, in the next, next video and next reflection. Again, it would be very interesting to hear your thoughts and ideas. Have you experienced this? Are you operating in the gifts and the callings of God? Uh, what level of maturity are you in that process? And do you have any like tips or instructions on how to find that confidence? And maybe what are the biggest confidence breakers and wrong beliefs that we have in our culture or personal lives that make it difficult? Because it's a very important subject, but not very easy. Anyway, see you next time.